Uh oh. <laughs> oh sh Why am I like this, Claire? Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. I've always had a pretty keen interest in these tiny little PCs. I used to use them for work when we wanted to test things on the metal and not in a virtual machine, just basically because of their form factor and they were easy to plug in and just use to do tiny little tasks. So when Mini's forum reached out and said, hey, we want to send you this DMAF5, a Ryzen 5 powered mini PC, I jumped at the chance because I love tinkering with tiny little computers. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this tiny little Ryzen 5 3550H powered machine. And yeah, we're going to just check it out and see if it's any good. So Mini's Forum actually sent this over for review. I didn't request it. They reached out and said, hey, we want to send you this thing. And I was just like, mini PCs, mini PCs are fun. So yeah, I said yes. In the DMAF5 configuration that they sent, this features the Ryzen 5 3550H. It's a mobile processor. This has also got eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gig M.2 drive. This is the entry level configuration. That's not the bare bones one. So this one actually came pre-installed with Windows 10 Pro as well, which I thought was pretty cool. And if you wanted to grab one of these things, they're going for around 499 US dollars in this configuration but I'll put a link so you can check out all the other configurations and whatnot and blah blah blah. Again this video is not sponsored they sent this for review and I said yes because I wanted to check this thing out because I wanted to see what this tiny little computer was capable of and that kind of leads me into the first thing I want to talk about with this mini PC the size. Now this is basically the size of any of those older Intel NUC PCs however this is an AMD system. Uh, if we compare this to the size of, let's say, my Google Pixel 5, you can see that this thing is very, very small. In imperial size, it measures about 5 inches by 5 inches. And if we compare it to the size of the Mac Mini, the Mac Mini absolutely eclipses the size of this tiny little mini PC. Straight off the bat, these computers aren't really for everyone, I get it. They are quite expensive for what they are, but what you're doing is you're paying for convenience in this form factor. All right, so what do you get in the box with this thing? Well, you get a 65 watt power supply that allows you to power it, as well as a VESA mounting bracket, so you can mount this to the back of your monitor if you were to be using this in a workspace or like a school environment, that kind of thing. I think that's actually quite good. Uh, most mini PCs do do that, so that's no surprise to me, but it is nice that they include the bracket in the box to do that. If you were to buy the DMAF5 in its base configuration with no SSD or RAM, they're going for around 399 US dollars. They actually floated this first on Indiegogo to see how much interest there'd be, and they actually completely eclipsed their goal here with the PC, which is uh, kind of interesting because I personally thought the market wouldn't have been as big as it is, but there are some really interesting use cases. And one of those use cases, to me personally, if I was to be buying something like this, would be an emulation PC and a retro gaming emulation PC because you can run things like Dreamcast emulators, PlayStation 2 emulators and whatnot, and they will run perfectly fine on this hardware. Now this is technically a shrunken down laptop in a smaller than a laptop form factor. If we wanted to talk connectivity, there are a, quite a few things going on here. If we start at the back, we've got some USB ports, we've got display port, we've got HDMI, we've got two ethernet ports, and if we flip it around to the front, you can see there's a tiny little microphone, there's USB Type-C, two more USB ports, a headphone jack, and the power button. Now the configuration that we got sent, as I mentioned, included a copy of Windows 10 Pro, but I did actually test this running Ubuntu 20.04.1 LTS just to see how it would run. And I've got some benchmarks and stuff we're gonna share a little bit later to show you what the gaming performance is like in Linux. Because yes, you can actually run some 3D titles with this APU. In terms of upgrading this and the configuration that they actually sent to us, it's got one sodium RAM module slot populated by an eight gig stick. However, for another project, I actually bought a 16 gig kit by accident 
Don't ask how that happened. You'll, I'll talk about this in another video, but I did uh, run this with the 16 gig kit from HyperX that I, I bought by mistake and it worked no problem. So you can install a maximum of 32 gigs of RAM in this. And I'm not sure how picky this is gonna be with memory, but it ships with 2400 megahertz memory. I put 2666 memory in there and it worked no problem. However, in the BIOS, I couldn't overclock the memory to 2666. I did dive and dig around in the BIOS for quite a while. These systems have a BIOS that's very OEM and very, very basic. So in terms of configuration, you're not gonna get every single option that you're gonna find on a full fat desktop PC. Although there are quite a few things that you can modify in the BIOS, but like I said, it's a bit hit and miss with the support for memory in this, in terms of overclocking. Okay, let's go back to upgrading this thing. Uh, the M.2 comes out pretty easily. It's a single screw. It's a standard M.2 slot that you'd find on any desktop PC or any other type of laptop. Underneath the M.2 slot is a Wi-Fi slot. Now this one, as configured, has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0, which is quite nice. It's also got another little trick up its sleeve. It's got a SATA or SATA, if you will, connector, which allows you to plug in a 2.5 inch SSD into the system itself. And the drive itself, and the one that I used for testing is the brand new Samsung 870 Evo 2 terabyte. The drive attaches to the lid of the mini PC, which is really easy to open. I, I kind of played around with it in the intro and popped it open and closed a bunch of times, but you just press two fingers down on each of the corners, well, the bottom corners, and the lid pops up pretty easily. So, and to open it again, And that's it, and then we're in. So I did reinstall the stock memory that comes with this. This is the eight gig module I was talking about with the stock M.2. But as mentioned in the last couple of weeks, I did some testing in Linux and I swapped that drive out for one. So I didn't ruin the stock installation that came on this because it does have a Windows 10 Pro license. And yeah, I wanna keep that intact for this system. And that's the other thing, them including a copy of Windows 10 Pro, uh, although it's an OEM license, Windows 10 Pro is not cheap. So the fact that it's included in that price is actually pretty good as well. Okay, let's uh, do what we usually do and run this thing through our regular suite of benchmarks and a couple other benchmarks that kind of uh, uh, are more suited towards this PC given its lower specs. But let's check out those benchmarks now. All right, now this is our regular suite of benchmarks that we use for every GPU in every system. However, because this is such a low spec GPU, we actually scaled it back to lower resolutions. Uh, what you're noticing here is that like most Ryzen processors, especially that include these APUs, in dual channel mode, they will perform a lot better. And sometimes, and just like the graphs are showing, even twice the performance in certain applications. But this is no secret with Ryzen whatsoever. As for thermals, the thermals are actually a lot better than I expected they would be. And that's because I have a special custom tuned fan curve that makes it quieter, but also keeps the thermals under control as well. As you can see by those benchmarks, the performance of the system isn't too bad given how much it costs and the specifications. I think it's a pretty capable little Ryzen powered mini PC. However, there's a few little things about this that I don't like. The first thing I don't like is how absolutely loud this thing is. Look, this is what it sounds like with the stock fan curve. See what I mean? It's uh, pretty loud in its stock state. However, you can go into the BIOS and modify the fan curve, which I would definitely recommend because sometimes at idle when you're not doing anything, it just ramps up and it's really loud and that can get very, very annoying. So do yourself a favor and do adjust the fan curve in the BIOS. 
And I'm going to show you how to do this really quickly because if you do decide to buy this, you might not actually be able to find where to do this because it's not really clear. So yeah, this is how you do it. The truth is we don't really cover these types of computers on the channel, mainly because uh, they're very, very niche. However, I do want to do more stuff like this because personally, these little computers really interest me. Now, in terms of pricing for this, the bare bones kit is, I think it's a little bit too expensive for what it is. If you do get this with an M.2 and eight gigs of RAM, I think it's more worth the money. You can go other configurations, like they've got a 16 gig of RAM version and a 512 NVMe, and also a 32 gig version and a 512 NVMe as well. The prices go up about $100, so it starts at $399, goes up to $499, $599, and then it goes up to $649 for the top tier one. But do I think it's worth the money for what you're getting? I'm undecided. I mean, if you're going for something like this, like specifically for a use case, like using it as a retro gaming system or like a little retro gaming console, I think there are better options out there. However, if you want to use this as a little home theater PC, or you want it to use it for streaming media, or even using this for something as a virtualization host, I think for the price, you could probably build a desktop PC with a little bit better specs, maybe, right? Because remember, you're getting a quad core CPU, you're getting eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, you're getting Wi-Fi, you're getting dual ethernet, you're getting a whole bunch of things that you would typically find on a motherboard of a higher end desktop PC. However, there's two limiting factors with this. First one is the CPU. The storage expandability is not really an issue. The second one that would have been nice, which they have done with AMD systems is Thunderbolt. If you could attach an external GPU to this, this thing would be an absolute recommend, an absolute monster. However, Mini's Forum does have a bunch of Intel ones like this that do support Thunderbolt. So as a bit of feedback for Mini's Forum, I think if you did an AMD version with Thunderbolt, it would be absolutely killer, especially for those people who want a low cost PC so the actual hardware itself can be quite low and then you can get an external GPU enclosure and use an external GPU. So yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of the Minis Forum DMAF5. This video is a bit weird, I know. I, I completely just went off the cuff. I just wanted to talk about my experience with it and the fact that I do really like these little computers. I think there's a bit of merit to their design. They're super convenient. I like that you can mount them to the back of your screen. I like that they exist for people who don't want to have a massive desktop PC at home. And that is another reason why I bought the M1 Mac Mini. Because personally, if I'm doing things on little PCs to test stuff, sometimes a virtual machine isn't the way that I'd prefer to do things. And sometimes I just like to test it right on the metal. And things like this are good for that. All right, ladies and gents, let me know what you think about mini PCs and more specifically the Minis Forum DMAF5. I know it's been out a little while. I know there's plenty of reviews out there. I'll link a bunch of other reviews down in the description down below, but I wanted to give you guys my two cents on these type of mini PC systems. Let me know if you think we should do more of it. I would be inclined to do more. I do like them. It's very, very niche, but they are really fun to tinker with considering how much power is in such a small package. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hate the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And mini PCs. They're also really good musical instruments too. Thanks for watching.